but I'm still going to be a douchebag forever. What the fuck is up? Good, bad, ugly, and certainly, most importantly, mediocre people of YouTube, like myself, who are probably some of the more, uh, better musicians. Uh, a lot of talent there in the uh, mediocre YouTube community, because instead of, let me see how to pause this, instead of focusing all their talent on what the best amp is, and what the best fucking strings are, and this fucking uh, Squire versus Fender, and this and that and the other... Mediocre guys are more likely to be focusing on trying to play some fucking music, man. And as you can tell by the title, yes, yes, this is a uh, reply video to Scott Grove's uh, recent video. Um, Scotty touched me this morning when I watched that, as he likes to do from time to time. And I don't mind, I let him, you know. Good guy, you know. Let him get a feel once in a while. But anyway, the things that he talked about in his uh, video were extremely important. Um, I think he left out a part, and that's what I want to go over in this video. Uh, but before we get to all that, <clears throat> I'm going to go through, you know, kind of uh, what Scott went through. When he started out, you know, when I started out playing guitar, I had gotten a, well, let's go back to when I started out uh, listening to music. When I uh, started listening to music, my, I'll make this quick, my very first album was Kiss, Dress to Kill, and loved it, and tried to wear it out, and shortly after that, I was given the Black Sabbath Paranoid album, and absolutely blew my fucking mind. And then somewhere, probably Christmas of that year, I w got a uh, guitar, and I wish I still had it. It was now no, no not, it was a plastic guitar, and, and but it had a uh, image of Willie Nelson on it. <clears throat> and uh, God, if I could have that guitar back, man, I'd love to have it just to hang. I mean, like I said, I have plastic frets, I think, and even you know. And, but it was my first guitar, and I just played the hell out of it. I had no idea what I was playing, but I just played and played and played and played, and. Then Randy Rhodes came into the scene, and that was it. I wanted to be a guitar player. I wanted to learn how to play the goddamn guitar by any means necessary. <coughs> and I, you know, obviously learned very quickly that, you know, it can take a lot. But what I did. And at that time, when I got my first electric guitar, which is hanging over there, off to Paul Roney soon to get restripped and painted, it was that guitar and uh, this amp that you see behind me, this Boss amp, it's not the exact one. I, I bought this uh, a couple years ago because this was the very first amp I ever had. <clears throat> and I had a, originally, uh, Ibanez Tube Screamer which didn't really do a lot with that amp, it was being a solid stain amp and everything. It wasn't, you know, this doesn't kind of really jive. So I ended up with a Boss Metal Zone, which is a pedal that I love till this day. I still use it all the time. And when I'm, um, when I'm somewhere where I just have a practice amp or whatever, I'm usually hooked into a Boss Metal Zone. Um, don't use it on my tube amps too much uh, yet. Going to try a few things. The thing about the Metal Zone, the tube amps is, and it kind of made me give up on it was because uh, they seem to drive it way too hard, and it's hard to really keep under control. But you know, there's different uh, things coming out now about running it through the um, the uh, effects loop, and guys are having good luck with that. <clears throat> so, getting back to what I was saying. So at that time, me and a couple of buddies, you know, we wanted to be in a band, and, and we put ourselves together in a garage, and, you know, we 
bang the shit out of the drums and play the guitar and it was just nothing but a bunch of fucking noise and there might have been a little creativity there but you know it was just very raw uh, ingredients I'm not even gonna call it talent yet you know it's just very raw ingredients but that's you the first thing you realize is that your the amplifiers are not loud enough you know <clears throat> your bass amp and your guitar amp is just nothing's overcoming the drums and that's when you find out that oh well you know you're supposed to have you know some main speakers and a mixing board and everything goes through that and that's how you get your sound and your amp as long as you can hear your amp you're good you know well with that little amp I couldn't even hear it so I had upgraded to a bigger amp <clears throat> and god I don't even remember what it was uh, it, I had not gotten into the JCM 800s by that time um, but anyway took some lessons and uh, from some teachers that we're teaching me the type of music that I wanted to listen to um, and helping me to give ideas, you know, to, to give me ideas and, and, you know, really, I think what I got out of those lessons was inspiration to be able to become a better player. But, you know, no, did not have YouTube. You know, I was not born in the, I was, I did not grow up in the 60s and 70s like Scott. I grew up in the 70s and 80s and 90s. Um, <clears throat> so we had quite a bit of technology then, and one of the tech pieces of technology that I used as a tool back then was a Sony Walkman. And what I could do is put my headphones on and listen to a song, and then to a part where I wanted to learn how to play, stop it and rewind it, and 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 then go okay, I, I okay it's this note. Okay, it's this note here, so it's got to be somewhere. In the, and of course, I was going after you know solos and stuff like that, which, in hindsight, was really not a good idea for me to be going after that kind of stuff since I I didn't know how to simply play rhythm, you know. And and I really believe to be a good guitar player, you need to do both, you know. Nonetheless, I had one Walkman where I could. Uh, if I hit the play key and the rewind key at the same time, it would slow it down. So it became. You know what I mean? <clears throat> so it, it brought that to a point where I could start to figure that stuff out on my guitar, you know? And uh, did that for quite a long time, you know, many, many years as a kid and you know at this point you're starting to pick up things and, and now it's like we get together go down my buddy's basement and we can actually play some songs you know some all the way through and uh... and we're put starting to put our own little twists on them and stuff like that then in my freshman year of high school um... i was signing up for you know first to sign up for high school and, and i noticed on there they had a beginning guitar course that you could take and then they had an advanced and then they had a musical theory class you could take so I took uh, I took the beginner guitar course and I took musical theory against the counselors wishes they said they told me and they were trying to be honest with me and they were completely right in the end um, they said you shouldn't take that musical theory class until after you've gone through your advanced guitar class and I'm like oh whatever you know I know everything I'm fucking 17 and you don't know what the fuck you're talking about <clears throat> but they were right I ended up not showing up to the fucking class and everything because it just didn't make sense to me but uh, the guitar teacher I had was he was great he meaning here's how he was great he didn't care what skill level anybody was this is this class okay this is our class and this is what we're gonna focus on and he got everybody together on the basic chords and fingering the basic chords the way they should be fingered and and then moving on from that <clears throat> and we had this every day for an hour and a half you know we, that would, we would do nothing but play guitar 
and uh, it really amped you through because the next day, because you really wanted to start. Playing. Sometimes you learn some cool shit, you know. And, <clears throat> and then on Fridays, we were allowed to bring in our um, electric guitars, which was great. And uh, you know, basically, we were allowed to just do our thing. And then Mr. Andres, the teacher, he would come in and say, "Hey, you know, shut it down for a minute. I want to show you something on these electric guitars that you can do." And he would teach us something that would be useful on the electric guitar, which is, I've been thinking about putting a couple of lessons together for you guys of things that I find extremely useful, you know, and uh, and then they, they're kind of difficult in a way, but they, they end up being really useful in just about any type of playing. Um, and, I, and I don't see anybody else on YouTube doing it yet, so I'm really thinking about uh, putting that out there um, it's not complicated well it is complicated stuff some of it <clears throat> but the keep in mind that what I'm going to be trying to do here is uh, to give you guys something that is useful you know what I mean to the rest of your musical career so <clears throat> you know around 1995 uh, the internet started popping up But it was nothing. I mean, there was just, it was kind of like a joke. It was like, okay, how do we get to see the porn? <laughs> you know what I mean? Other than that, people were doing actual work and business and stuff on it. There were no search engines like Google. Uh, it was just kind of a, a thing. A thing you knew was going places, but we just didn't really know how to make it go in any direction, you know? And then all the eggheads in California figured it out, and... You know, we skipped from 1995 to 2018, where we are now, and uh, it, wow, you know, I mean, it's a lot has happened, and um, and a lot of years have passed, and uh, I think Scott's absolutely right that um, sometimes, as far as this stuff goes, music stuff goes, it's done a lot more damage than it's done good. Um, it's very useful as in a person, an example, personal example of mine is when I'm told, Hey, man, you got to learn this song cause we got to play it on Friday night or whatever. And I'm like, okay, cool. And, I, and I'm like, I know the song and I'm like, well, how the fuck did that chorus go? Well, it's great to go into YouTube and type it in and all oh, that's how it goes. And then I got it, you know? But what is not great is, uh, you know, you're, you're learning, it's hard to say, some of it's really great and others is not, you know, like Scott said, you know, just take time to learn your instrument, you know, don't get involved with all the drama and the bullshit, take time to learn your instrument, you know, that time I took when I listened to cassette tapes, and then I would find, okay, he's on this note. So, okay, if he's on this note, he's got to either be in here or here, and it's most likely here. So now I know I'm in the same zip code, and I'm going to go from there. And I listen to it very slow. Okay, there's the next note. Bump, bump. Uh, you know, and I, oh, there's the next note. And, and, then, and then it's a trill. Okay, I, I, you know what I mean? What that did for me was allowed me to basically break down any song I can hear you know any song I can any song I hear I can say okay he's he's doing this he's he's in the key of a or whatever and then now he's going here and I can and it's almost you know it's a it's what I'm getting at is it's a playing by ear <clears throat> type of thing and um, it's really important that you, you you get that playing by ear and, and I, you know, what I'm kind of afraid of with the next generation of uh, people that did a bunch of uh, guitar playing on YouTube is that they're going to be phenomenal guitar players that are completely fucking tone deaf. You know what I mean? You would hope that it comes along the way. They learn the tone and uh, the tones and everything like that. But uh, I could see that. I could see that happening. You know, because they just... They don't know where they're at. They're not. They're just learning. Okay, just play it like this. 
And a lot of the teachers are not telling them, you know, where they're at, what they're doing, what uh, may have been going through somebody's head when they went this direction. And that's the direction I'm in right now after studying mainly Randy Rhodes for the last year or more and I continuing to study Randy Rhodes stuff because Randy would in intentionally, it had to be, he would intentionally start on a wrong note and then go and take it to another place in order to get to where he wanted to be. And in the meantime, while all that was going on, it just made for an amazing sound. And, uh, and that's really cool. So, <clears throat> I guess what I'm saying is that, you know, use the internet. Use YouTube as a tool. One tool. You know what I'm saying? We have several tools to do different jobs, you know. I've got the, I've got this propane torch which does one job. I've got this wrench, air wrench that does another job. And you know, so this is YouTube. So use this tool for what it is. You know, when you're having a hard time on something and you're just really stumped, you know, yeah, use it, search it, and find out what it is, and then get the hell off of it, you know what I mean? <clears throat> In my case, my passion with music ever since it started, my passion has always been writing my own music. I've never cared to do covers of other people's music. I've never cared to play other people's music. I just... Never cared for it. Still don't care for it. I want to play my own music that I created, and I love it. And I'm almost—I almost drive myself mad with it because, you know, I—I I hear these things in my head, and I go, "Oh my God, I got to get this down." And um, and I do, and then I, I come down, and I plug a guitar in, and I hit record, and and I've got a ton of samples and stuff. And and I'm really reaching a time right now where I need to start making some song. I need to do a new album because I have enough uh, material right now where you know I could do that with no without no problem. I, I would imagine I've got well over 200 uh, song whatever you want to call them you know what was in my head at one moment I was listening to in my head and I needed to put in on the paper you know or put into the digital recorder so um, that's where it's at, you know, go out, do what you need to do to create the sound that you need to create for yourself. Use whatever equipment gains you that sound, you know, it doesn't matter the brand, the anything doesn't, that's why that whole Tonewood debate back then in those days. I just laughed all the way through it because I thought it was the most ridiculous fucking thing, and I still do. That they were argue, people are arguing over if this guitar, the wood species makes a different sound than this guitar, wood species. Who gives a fuck? Even if that's the case, which, yeah, I ended up getting involved in it because you know some of my brothers out there, Scotty Grove and Will Gelvin, and you know. I'm not gonna let my brothers hang, man. I'm gonna fucking help back them up if I can, and I could because they both had a lot of really good points. But you know, but I still, even while doing that, I made clear that you know, I don't care about wood species whatsoever. If I go to a guitar store, I am not thinking about wood species. I'm gonna pick up some guitars, and the one that is sounds great and feels great. That's the guitar I'm walking out with. You, I, I could care less if I ever find out the material it was built with. You know, it just doesn't matter to me. And then the next time I do it, it's the same thing. I'm gonna walk in. I'm gonna pick up some guitars and the ones that feel and sound the greatest to me. That's what I'm leaving with, and it's not gonna be based on tone, wood or. Uh, wood species a brand named it's not going to be based on any of that it's going to be based on what's best for me and uh you know that i think that we need a lot more of that 
you know, you guys, you focus on you guys, and I'll focus on me, and, um, you know, if we can, as musicians, as mediocre YouTube channel musicians, if we can, uh, throw a few things out every once in a while that are useful, you know, that would be cool, because I think we'd all be interested in that sort of thing. But, uh, you know, there's always the arguments. There's always the person that's going to tell you you sound like shit and everything else. And that's because that person, you know, they don't even sound like shit. Because they can't fucking play at all. So, but, uh, yeah, you know, I mean, all the trolling and everything. I mean, some of that shit's funny. I mean, hey, you know what? It's funny to me when somebody goes out of their way to troll someone else and gets caught and gets busted, and another person goes and does a parody of it. That shit is funny to me. You know, when a troll gets caught and put in their place. So, you know, if you want to get angry about that just because you happen to not like that person, oh well, you know, <laughs> what's funny is funny. So, just everybody just take a fucking chillax pill, you know? I don't know what this fucking community is anymore. It started off, uh, I, I've been watching Scotty Grove since the beginning, and, and uh, it started off as a guitar community. And now it seems like a fucking <clears throat> guitar community divided and at war. And, you know, it, it always struck me as funny because all the musicians in my life, most of them have treated me with the utmost respect. And... Um, unexpectedly treated you, you know, treated me with a lot of respect, you know, people I didn't know. Now, there were always the jerk-off bands that, you know, wanted to act like they were above everyone else, but those are few and far between. But most of the guys I know and still know and, and meet, you know, still meet, you know, at different places, they, we all treat each other with a common respect, you know, and it's, has nothing to do with arguing and hating and all that kind of stuff. So, I really appreciated Scotty's video. He touched me in a very nice way this morning. <laughs> and, uh, and I appreciate it. And, uh, and I hope that, uh, you guys, you know, use the internet for the, to recognize it as a tool and use that tool appropriately because you know it's only one tool and one tool is not the tool to complete the job you need many tools to complete the job and as it is with guitar you know most of the tools that you need to become uh, the guitar player you want to become are up in here and, and they're out in, they're out in here you know, YouTube is a tool that, you know, you can do a couple of things on. Most of it's, it's coming from here, and it's coming from here. And, uh, and that's where it's at. So, anyway, that being said, that's kind of my reply to that video. But, uh, thanks, Scott, for putting it up, and, uh, thanks for touching me in a way that, uh, me, allowed me to make this video. Peace out. See you next time. I like to suck on the bone.